I, uh, in uh, in Max 165, we define the integral as a limit of uh, of a Riemann sum. But those are the integrals on the closed integral. And uh, yeah, first of all, let's go over what we did. Okay, so we given a function. Yeah, so we give a function. On uh, some closed interval, so we, this is a defined everywhere. Okay, then the integral of this function is going to be the limit of the Riemann sum. Okay, and uh, here the the size will. A sub interval approaches zero uniform. Okay, this they all approach zero, and here as an arbitrary partition. Okay, and the delta xi is going to be xi minus xi minus one, and the xi star is an arbitrary point in the sub interval. That's it. So, what, what do we uh. Let's have a quick review on the on the on the properties. First of all, yeah, few facts. Okay, the value of this function is uh, is not changed if uh, if uh, if the value of function changes at the at the find many points is is unchanged. Okay, if the values of function f uh, change at finite many points. Okay, so that means you can allow the function not continuous. For example, for example, this is a picture, right? Here's the continuous function. And then, yeah, this is a very uh, uh, deep theorem. We are probably not going to uh, uh, talk about this. Yeah, we cannot. And you change the value at one point and make the function uh, uh, broken, right? When the graph is broken, it's the same function. I just change the value. One. So the function on the right hand side is not even continuous, okay? And the function on the left side is continuous. But the both function, okay, they have the, the same limit of the Riemann sums, okay? So, yeah, we don't use that very often, but I just let you know that the function is not necessarily to be continuous and, uh, and, uh, and the still integrable, that means the limit exists uh, as the size of partition, the size of subintervals in partition approaches zero uniformly, okay? So this is a, uh, uh, but we're not going to go uh, deep, okay? But the, the interval must be finite, okay? So factor two, um, if f is continuous, except for at a few points, okay? But at those points, you have to still, uh, just let's assume it continues on, on the interval, okay? But you can change the value of the continuous function at the few points. The function still has a left end, uh, is still uh, uh, continuous from right, the continuous from left, okay? Then this, this exists, okay? That means the limit exists, okay? This is actually proved by Riemann. That's why Riemann deserves the name of Riemann sums. He, sp he spent um, time on that and he, he showed that. That's why whenever the function continues or the continuous function, you just uh, remove some points or change the value at some point, it doesn't matter, okay? The, the, the value 
the integral still exists and uh, then equal to the value of the original function before you change the values, okay? For, um, so those are the uh, two, two facts. So we are going to, today we're going to study uh, the integrals on um, uh, open intervals, okay? And this open interval could be uh, infinite, could be bounded, okay? So here's a, here's a, let's look at, yeah, here's a definition. So I'm going to give only the first definition, okay? If, uh, yeah, F is defined on a one side closed interval, a side is open, this is a B, okay? B could be finite or B is infinite, okay? Doesn't matter, okay, it's not closed. So we don't know the value of the function at the B, okay? If it's a uh, B is a finite, you can talk about the value function at the B, you can assign the value, okay, to it if you want, okay? Then the integral from, from A to, the integral of the function over the interval from A to B is going to be defined to be, uh, uh, let's use a T, T approaches the B from the left-hand side and the integral from A to T and F of X dx, okay, that's it. So if B, is infinite, then B negative, you know, sign is going to be, yeah, it's positive infinite here, okay? So this is the idea. And the similarly can define uh, uh, integral over interval, left side is open, right hand side is closed, or both sides is closed, or both sides, yeah, if both sides are open, you have to do, you have to, you have to uh, uh, separate them, okay? For example, if f is defined on a, an open interval, both sides open, and a, b are both could be finite, could be infinite, okay? When it's open, then this can be infinite, okay? Then, then uh, you have to define this one as, as the integral from a to any point and here c to the b f of x yeah okay and the c is a, an arbitrary number between them now uh so then a c is a one side is open the side is closed so this one is going to be t approaches a from positive side okay this is a proper integral and this will be T approaches B from the left hand side. Okay, so that's the definition of the integral if the function is defined on half open, half closed interval or both sides open interval. Okay, uh, let's take a look at the following example. Okay, so this is the integral from one to infinity, one of x dx. Uh, so first of all, yeah, here B is infinity, all right? So if you look at the graph, it goes like that. So we are going to evaluate this in, the uh, integral of this function over the interval from one to infinity. So our interval is here from one to positive infinity, okay? This is over. So the geometric meaning of this integral really should be the area, in some sense, the area of the region under this graph, okay? So this is going to be the area, the area of this, the unbounded region under y equals one of x x is between one and the infinity, okay? That makes sense, okay? So region is unbound, okay? It, uh, but maybe 
it closes very fast when x approaches infinity. So, so, uh, so maybe it has a finite area. Okay. So let's do this problem. Step one. This is a, a viewed as the limit of the integral over this closed interval, okay, from one to t. So then you take the limit, okay. So let's uh, let's find out the entire derivative of one of x is nature log over x, and evaluate two end point. Okay, so it's going to be nature log of t minus nature log of one. But nature of t approaches infinity as x t approaches infinity. So the answer is infinity. So that means the area of this unbounded region, okay? As t approaches infinity, then it's getting larger and larger. Okay. You can also look at uh, the interval of one of x dx from zero to one. Again, this is an integral, and the function is undefined, the zero. It's on one side, it's closed, and the other side is open. So this is, a, if you draw the graph, it's still the same graph. But this time, it is going to be from zero to one. I think the answer will be still infinite. The reason is, based on the graph, if you think the integral is going to be the area, then then the by the symmetry of the picture okay so the region bounded by this curve we have an infinite uh area so let's do this problem okay here's a win of x dx right. so according to the definition it's t from approaches from positive side t to the win, all right? And actually we are talking about the area of that region, all right? The function is defined across the interval from t to win. This is going to be nature log of x, right? And uh, and there'll be nature log of one minus nature of t. When t approaches zero from, from positive side, nature log of t approaches negative infinity, right? But there's a negative sign in front of that. So this can be positive infinity. If you understand those two examples, we, yeah, we understand all the material in this section. Okay. Now, the, is it possible? Is it possible the bond, the region is unbounded, but still have finite many areas? I think it's possible. Okay, if it's close to, if the the end of this region closes very fast, then you get finite many areas. Okay, even it's getting, you know, it's, it's getting longer and longer. So how do you make this gap, okay? And it close up quickly. We just increase the power of, uh, of the X, okay? See, the function, look at the function, right? You have one of X, then the one of X squared, one of X cubed, and this function, when x getting larger and larger, you see here x is greater than equal one. So it's getting smaller and smaller, right? So 
So maybe this is a winner of X, but then they're passing through the same point. I think it's going to be like that. So, you see? So the, yeah, this is a point the one and the one, all those functions passing, yeah, the graph of all these functions pass, pass, yeah, pass through the, the point when the one, because when X equals one, the Y value is going to be one. But when the power of X increases, and then the, the graph is getting close, close to the X axis, okay? So I believe that there are some numbers so you can get uh, finite areas of the region because the gap flows much faster, okay? So the next question is determine the value of A such that as the integral from one to infinity, one over x of A dx is finite. Okay, that's the research project. We want to speak it out. Uh, for what kind of values A? This gives you, indeed, that gives you a finite area of the region, okay? Although the region is still unbounded. Yeah. But when the X getting larger, larger, the gap is still there, just getting tiny, you know, so small, okay? Like one over one billion in meters, you know, that's very small uh, gap there. Okay, so let's see. Uh, it's the same idea, right? Uh, this is a T approaches positive infinity, the integral from one to T. Okay, then I'm going to find the entire derivative x to the negative d dx, right? The entire derivative, yeah, we have to make sure A is not going to be one. Otherwise, the formula for the entire derivative will be different. So that is going to be one minus A, X to the one minus A, right? Evaluate the T, okay? We assume that A is not going to be one because I already did the case A equals one, right? So just look at A is not. All right. Yeah, A equals one is already done. Right. Okay. So let's understand the limit. T one minus a minus one to the one minus a, it's just one. So the limit is determined by the first term. T to some power. If the power is positive, it's you're getting larger, larger. Right. So that means if a is less than one. This is going to be, it's two cases. It's going to be positive infinity if one minus a is positive, right? Right? A cannot be one. So if it's going to be finite, so it's going to be zero, the first term. It's going to be negative one. So it's actually a minus one. So if, if one minus a is negative, so it's a greater than one. So this is a positive number. And uh, we do not consider the case when A equals All right, why? Because when this part approaches zero, so negative one over one minus says one over eight minus. All right, now it's clear, right? A is greater, less than one. This is the same as A is less than one. This is the same as A greater than one. So only when A is greater than one, you get a finite many, uh, finite, area, okay? And then not only get finally, you get exact value. So now let's summarize what we got. It is gonna be infinity if A is less than equal to one, okay? Because when equal to one, already did that, okay? And it's gonna be one over A minus one, it's positive number if A is greater than one. You see that? 
Okay, I don't know what's happening. It's up here. All right, so we solved the problem. But uh, if we use, if you look at the problem from zero to one, that would be probably a different story. Okay. Yeah, when it's finite, when it's uh, infinite. You can assume that A is not going to be one, right? Because we know A equals one, it's a, it's a limit. Uh, the integral is infinite. Uh, right? Can you do this problem? Yeah, work out this. Just, just take a limit, evaluate the integral. Can you figure it out? <laughs> Don't just sit there. Yeah, she so can do it. So then you save your time when you get home. Okay. All right. So by definition, this is supposed to be the limit as x approaches zero from positive side, right? It's the same, you know, and the entire derivative will be the same. So this will be x to the negative a, so the, it's gonna be one minus a, here's uh, t to the one minus a, and then evaluate, it's not t x and t to the one, right? Right, to find the entire derivative. Let me, So the question is, uh, oh, this is a one. So one is just nothing here, right? And here's t to the one minus a. Okay. Right, t is uh, uh, behind the one, yeah. So the question is when this one has a limit. Find it. Well, uh, just look at this part, right? One minus a. If one minus a is positive, then it ha it, uh, it it has zero. The limit is zero. If one minus a is negative, it's going to be negative negative infinity, right? And uh, uh, Yeah, okay. So clearly, uh, I think one minus is positive in this case. Then the second term, when x approaches zero, if t to the positive power approaches zero. So then you get one, one over one minus a, okay? So this is positive now. Now, if one minus a is less than zero, what happens? If one minus a is less than zero, this term approaches, right, positive infinity, okay? Then you have a negative sign in front of that, then approaches negative infinity. Then you have another negative sign in front of that, so one over minus a. 
one minus a, this is a negative. So, so this should be positive infinity because the function, the value function is positive. Okay. So it's slight, it's slightly the opposite way, right? So now let's summarize. Okay, when a is less than or equal to one, uh, when a is less than one, right? If a is less than one, it's fine. If a is greater than one or equal to one, uh, then the limit is going to be infinity. So we just did that before. Yeah, when a equals one, we solve the problem earlier. So this is a, it's a slight different than, than the previous one, right? So from here, you can tell that a square of x dx is a finite, okay? Yeah, because a is less than, a is one half. But then it's the same function, this will be infinite. <laughs> okay. okay, be careful there. Yeah. Okay. And the same here, from zero here, if x squared dx is infinity, but this will be finite. Okay. One of x squared is integral from one to two is finite because x squared goes very fast. That's why it makes the fraction in case quickly. Okay. But over the interval from zero to one, one of x squared, if x Approach x if x approaches zero, x squared approaches it very fast. Then it can make one of x squared increases very fast. Okay, that's the reason you cannot have a finite area under the uh, curve. Okay. All right, so now let's take a look at this, this integral. Right. If we draw the picture, okay, if we draw the picture, it's a symmetric, it's an even function. When x equals zero, the value is one. It goes like that. Right. It's a symmetric about the y-axis. Right? Yeah. But it's possible uh, the area under that curve is, uh, is uh, infinite because it's a bounded region. But I think it's finite. The reason is when x is sufficient large, this function is almost equal to like a win of x squared. We already know. The integral of a one of x squared is fine. Okay, so y equals one plus one of x squared is almost equal to one of x squared as x approaches plus minus infinity, right? Uh, so I believe that this has finite area. So question: How do you find it? Okay. So this this interval both sides is open, so this should be equal to choose an arbitrary point, but usually choose zero. Okay. Uh, we can for the one on the left hand side, t approaches negative infinity, it's t from zero, okay? So right-hand side, t approaches positive infinity.
Okay. Now the entire derivative of one over one plus x square. I hope you remember. It's going to be arc tangent x. Then evaluate the t and z, right? And here, it's the same. Uh, arc tangent x, and from zero to t. So arc tangent zero is zero. So this term is just minus arc tangent t. And this term will be arc tangent t, okay? But the term on the left hand side, t approaches negative infinity. When t approaches negative infinity, arc tangent t approaches negative pi over two. Because there is a negative sign in front of that. So it's gonna be pi over two. And that's a pi over two, total is pi. It's interesting. So the area of that region is pi. Okay. So uh, yeah, we proved that, right? The area of that region is pi. And uh, before that, we don't know, right? So it looks like that. You see, compare this. What kind of area of a so, right area is the unique disk is pi, right? So this is a yeah, this is a graph like this, right? We also have a circle with radius one. And those two regions has the same area, <laughs> right? The area of circle with radius equal one is gonna be pi. And then also it shows you the area of that region and the curve. Y equals one plus X squared also equals pi. Yeah, they have the same area. Those two regions have the same area. Okay. We uh, we just sketched the graph, uh, but we did not know that until we do the calculation. So sometimes mathematics can give you very good uh, Estimate. Okay. Uh, I remember there was a in physics general relativity theory. First of all, physics assumes certain laws have to be set uh, as has to hold for the universe. Then they have equations in mathematics. They had find it as they prove that before the bigger bang, the size of the universe, our universe only like this tiny ping pong <laughs> It's hard to believe, but that's their way up. That's how they uh, prove it. So it takes the limit, because when t approaches zero, the time t, right, approaches zero from the right-hand side. Okay. There is a very nice book, if you're interested, it's called The Elegancy of a Universe. Uh, it's a very nice book. I, I read it. There are lots of great new ideas inside. All right, now uh, let's look at the next problem. Oops, oops. Okay. Determine whether this is a, a, a finite, if it's finite, what is the value? Now, how do I know this is finite? Okay. How do I know this is a finite? Okay. Uh, Look at this, right? This function, this function is only defined on the interval from two to four, four side curve, four is curves. The function is then defined when x equals two. That's what we call the 
uh, in prop, yeah, proper integrals, yeah, proper integrals. That's why we have to uh, uh, take a limit to find the to find the value of the integral. Okay, the integral is defined to be the limit x, right? Okay, but the re uh, uh, as a hint, I know this is my good example, right? From zero to one, one over x to the a dx, right? And do you remember when it's final, when it's uh, when it's closed, right? As infinite, right? If a is greater than or equal one, this is a finite task. You can one minus a if a is less than one. Okay. So when a is uh, smaller than one, it's it's finite. So when I look at this case here, it's almost like x minus two to power a. So a is one half. This should be finite. Okay. This should be finite. So before I solve the problem, I already know the answer. But I just don't know the exact value. What I'm gonna do is I, I write down the definition. Okay. And the t is greater than two. The interval from two to four, uh, yeah, the function is defined on the interval from two to four, from t to four. Then you can find the entire derivative of that function. It's a linear inside, right? Square root of x minus two. So you you actually you can you can uh, uh, find the write down the entire derivative directly. Okay, so it's going to be uh, one more step. Okay, x minus two to the negative uh, to the negative half dx. So the entire derivative of that function is going to be x minus two to the one half. I think it's multiplied by two. Yeah, when you differentiate, it's gone. Right. So t. So now clearly, two four minus uh, four minus two to the one half minus two t minus two to the one half, and I think it's clearly when t approaches two, two minus a uh, t minus two approaches zero because this is the square root of that number. It's approaches zero, so the answer is two square root two. It's fine. Yeah, if you have a trouble to find the entire derivative, you have to use a substitution. You open a small window here, you know, then, and then you you work out on the scratch paper. Okay. For example, like how do you find the entire derivative of this? Right. You use a substitution. Okay. Then you get u to the negative half du, right? Then you get one minus negative half u to the one minus negative plus constant. Then you get this, okay? Then you get two x minus two to the one half plus constant. This is how you get the entire derivative function using a substitution. All right. Now, uh, here's the note. Okay, we say that uh, sorry. So if function, this would be a function on the open, on one side is open, the other side closed. B could be infinite, right? Infinity, yeah. And we say that 
this is a convergent. If okay, the integral exists, in other words, convergent means really means the limit exists. Okay, if so, this is defined to be the limit. Okay, so this limit exists. Okay. Yeah, when we say uh, an integral is convergent, it really means by definition it's going to be limit of the integrals, and those in limit, the limit exists. That's why it's convergent. It's the integrals, the family of integrals from A to T, are convergent. Okay. All right. So. Uh, Take a look at the following example. Now, how do I know this is a convergent, the integral is fine? And there's x squared plus x there. Okay. When x is getting larger, larger, which term dominates? Uh, the denominator, x squared, right? Yeah. So you can see that x squared plus x equals x squared, 1 plus 1 of x, right? So when x is sufficient large, this term can be ignored, right? So, so you get x squared. I know this is a finite. This is a convergent, okay? So I think for some reason, this will be converging too. If I don't want to find exact value, how, how can I say this is converging too, right? Ah. But I think this is converging. The reason is, the denominator here, x squared plus x, is almost equal to x squared. And I know this is a special mode, right? And uh, this is a convergent. I know the value. Even. It's going to be 1 over, I think it's 1. Yeah, 1 over a minus 1. a is 2, so a minus 1. It's 1. So I believe that's convergent. Not only convergent, it's even smaller than 1. Okay, and then, and, and this should be smaller than one of x. The reason is x squared plus one is larger than x squared. So, and, mm -hmm. yeah. All right, but for this particular problem, I can do, I can do it directly. I can even find the value of, of this integral, okay? But later on, we are going to learn how to how to check that without, without to evaluate the integral, because sometimes it's impossible to evaluate the integral, but we still want to know whether, whether the integral is converging, or, or we want to get a rough estimate of the value, okay? But for this particular problem, 1 of x squared plus x is going to be 1 of x, x plus 1. I'm pretty sure it's going to be x minus x plus uh, 1 of x minus 1 of x plus 1. Okay. So the end, so the end, uh, the, uh, the derivative, it's going to be, right? So let's mm -hmm. evaluate. All right, so maybe we should, uh, oops, maybe we should write as x over x plus 1. Okay. So that's going to be nature of the t, when, uh, t plus 1 minus nature log of 1 over 2. I think it's clearly when t approaches one, t over t plus one approaches one, uh, when t approaches infinity. 
So it's going to be nature log of one minus, so minus nature log of one over two, okay? Because this path approaches one as t approaches infinity, okay? So the answer is going to be negative nature log of one half, it's going to be nature log of two, which is a positive number. It's a finite, it's positive number. Great. So you not only show that's convergent, you also get the value for the nature log of two. Okay, the value is nature log of two. But if I just ask to to show that this is a convergent, there's no need to evaluate the integral. Okay, there should be a quick way to to figure it out. Okay, here's the idea. Okay, this is a called uh, yeah, this is the theorem. Okay, if f of x is greater than uh, it's less than yeah, it's positive. Okay, this side is positive. It's like that. Okay, for um, and it continues if that continues. Okay, then this is a this is a, on the integral from a to infinity. Okay, if they have this bound, then this indefinite integral. Uh, no, this is a improper integral. Yeah. It it, it 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 has only two choices. These are finite or the infinite. Okay, so that means uh, this is going to be integral. This is always positive. Okay, from a to infinity g of x dx. So if uh, if the one on the left hand side, right hand side is the finite, then it forces the other one finite. Okay, my uh, here's a here's a remark. Okay. If f of x greater than zero and continues on the interval from a to infinity, and this, yeah, so this uh, this value only have a two options, either infinite or a finite. Okay, you cannot say the limit does not fit. The reason is. The reason is this integral is always increasing, okay? As t approaches infinity, okay? Right? So it's increasing, you have two options. One is the increase is there's upper bound over there. If there's upper bound over there, then it's finite. The limit is finite. Otherwise, the limit is, a, is the infinity. So, so you only have to, you cannot say, the limit as of this. The limit is a finite, finite number or uh, or infinity. Okay. Okay. Yeah. This is a uh, this is a reason. Yeah. This is a reason why that's a true. All right. So let's go back to the problem. Right? Okay. We go back to this problem. Since uh, 1 over x squared plus 1 is less than equal to 1 over square when x is greater than 1. And okay. this side is positive. So, so this is going to be less than equal to that. And and that is actually going to be one. And we already did that. You can you can evaluate the value. It's, it's nature log of two. So nature log of two is less than one. <laughs> Please. Yeah, nature of two is a positive number, but it's less than one. Okay. So this in price, you have this. If you don't want to know the exact value, that's then you get a rough estimate using this in code. 
why we need this uh, estimate. Uh, sometimes we are not evaluating, we're not able to evaluate the integral, such as from zero to infinity e to the negative x squared dx. Okay, this is a well-defined function. Okay. okay, the function is defined over when t equals zero, when x equals zero, it's gonna be a one. Okay, it decays very fast, mm -hmm. okay? y equals e to the x squared. Okay. Nobody here are able to evaluate the integral. Get, a, get some, I know there's a number. Can we express the number, the value of the integral in terms of some well-known number, like a square root two? Okay, I know this, if the limit, if the limit exists, Okay, and then it is a finite number. The question is, how do you describe that finite? Can you describe this finite number? There, there are infinitely many uh, real numbers there. Not all the numbers have a name, because otherwise you have infinitely many names, right? We only have two special numbers, pi and e. And the combination was, was, a, was a, a, you know, combination, you know, with other uh, well-known uh, notations, like a square root of pi or square root e, right? But still, we want to know whether this is a... Uh, uh, this is a uh, convergent or not, or if 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 it, if possible, we get some trying to get some uh, estimate. Okay. All right, how do, how do you do that? Well, we can, uh, we want to do this, right? It's negative. If that, if x squared become x, then maybe easy to find the integral, right? So can I estimate something like that? It's always true or not? I think this is only true for, for x squared and y, okay? When x is small, this is not true, okay? x squared, yeah, in order to make sure this equality, equality hold the x should be greater than equal one, right? So that means for x squared and equal y, I can do this statement, that's fine. So integral of e to the x squared dx can be separate. Okay, uh, since uh, this part, can we do rough estimate? I think this part is gonna be less than equal to e to the, mm -hmm. e to the zero, okay? Because the negative x squared is similar, right? And this part, less than that. Okay, so the first one is going to be what? The second one, you find the entire derivative, right? It's going to be integral from, entire derivative this, integral from one to t. Right? Then, uh, Then you get negative e to the negative t minus as a plus e to the negative. So the first term is going to be zero. 
So I get pretty nice estimate. Okay. So this is the upper bound for this integral. Okay. And the lower bound, I don't know. Yeah, it's upper bound. Okay. So the integral of this function is not only finite, but also bounded by this number. It's not too big. So in fact, the value of this function is going to be square root of pi over two. It's a very strange number, okay? But you cannot uh, evaluate using the traditional method. Okay, this is actually this problem is can be solved using complex analysis, complex numbers, complex functions. It was very surprised. The complex numbers are really are the imaginary numbers created by human beings. Does not exist. Okay, we just make it. You know, we can the real numbers. We why call it real? Numbers? It's a real one, two, three, four, five, right? Square pi. That's a real number. Complex numbers. What is i? I is a square root of one negative one. But we know that square root of negative one is not defined, right? No. In the real world, okay. So we have complex numbers, then we develop whole theory, and uh, and then then uh, this integral we change it to the integral on complex plane. Then we come back and eventually evaluate this integral. Okay, so it's not a, a trivial uh, uh, problem. Okay. But you can use a computer to estimate, you know, when 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 you choose sufficient large t from zero to t e to negative t x squared dx, she'll be very close to square pi over two. And so this is you can verify this this is true. Okay, but the question is how do we know that, right? At the very beginning. It's not uh, easy to see that. Okay. All right, let's Let's take a look at the next problem. This is the integral from one to infinity. So one plus sine square x and square x dx. Can you tell me this is divergent or convergent? You are not able to evaluate this. <laughs> You cannot solve this problem by proving the limit exists, okay? So my question is, is it convergent or divergent? Okay, why? Well, let's look at the estimate. This is a between, always between one and two. So the numerator is harder to handle, but I know it's between one and two. Okay. So in other words, one over one plus sine square x square x is between two over square two and one over square one over square x. Okay. So now the integral. is less than or equal to twice, and the greater than or equal to this. And it's easy to, to look at both sides, okay? And this is a square x. So a is less than the one, the both 
we already know that both it can be infinity. So some number between those two infinite numbers, non number, it's a kind of, you can call it a squeeze lemma, you know, squeeze lemma. Right? This implies. Then the next. Then this one. I'm going to change uh, uh, change a little bit. This is a uh, this is the. Okay. I want to. Yes, yeah, sine x is always positive. So let's say sine x, and. x squared. Okay. That's true problem. Is it converging or divergent? Clearly the function is only defined on this closed interval. So this is in proper interval. Now how do you handle the value? I think this is going to be divergent. So let's give a last uh, uh, estimate. I know sine x over x approaches one as x approaches zero from positive side, right? So that means sine x over x squared is going to be sine x over x times one of x, right? So this is almost equal to one of x for uh, for x close to zero okay this is a place where it's having trouble but i know this integral is going to be infinite right okay so i guess our integral is also infinite. But that's not a, the precise uh, argument, but we get some ideas already. So it's like a comparison. We are, we're going to study a lot of uh, stuff later on about how do we prove a sequence is converging or series converging. Yeah. So how can I show, yeah, I believe that this implies Because the only trouble here is the function, the behavior of the function nearby zero. Okay. okay. Now recall that uh, because the limit of sine x of x is one as x approaches zero. So actually we can get the, the, the rough estimate. Sine x of x should be less than one greater than cosine x, if you remember. I think so. Yeah, this is what we see. Okay, so that is an estimate. And when x is a, uh, yeah, actually we have this in code when we prove that power. So that's important to, to check, okay? So that means the integral from zero to pi, I don't need to worry about the integral from, from pi over four to pi. Because this is always finite. The only problem is this part. 
right? But this part for x between zero and pi over four, sine x over x square is going to be greater than equal to cosine x, right? But cosine x, x is between zero and pi over four is actually is greater than or equal to square root of two over two. You can have this setting. When x approaches zero, cosine x approaches one. Okay. So you have this estimate, then the integral from zero to pi over four, x squared sine x dx is greater than or equal to Okay. And this one is already, we know that it's different. Okay. So that's why, yeah, that is why, you know, this is a, this is a infinite, this is a finite. Okay. And the combine them together. It's so the argument is given below. Okay. Why this is different? Because the value of the integral is greater than the value of the one of x over that interval and the which is, which is infinity. So, so that's what we get. So. Okay. Estimate, yeah, you have to find the good, if you cannot figure out the estimate, and you can also say that because the limit is greater than equal to one. So sine x over x is, is close to, if you don't know this part, okay? But how do you give an argument? Um, since the limit as x approaches when sine x over x is going to win. So that means sine x over x is greater than one half, at least for x between zero and action, right? That's all you need. So then, then uh, this implies sine x over x squared greater than half of x, okay, for x. So, so the integral from zero to epsilon okay, is greater than or equal to, okay? But this is still going to be infinity. So, yeah, this is still going to be infinity because it's one of x. Yeah, you don't need to know exact value of action here. We know the limit is when, so the value of sine x of x is should be greater than equal to when half, when x is close to zero. Okay. All right, so uh, that's all about today's class. And uh,